Flame Flash Attack. Hi there. Episode 107 of the FlameFlash.net podcast. I'm up early because the internet was down last night when I usually record. So, here I am. Nice and quick. I'm going to get right to the Raptor Report. My birthday happened in this last week, and you can tell... Not just because, well, there was a lot of gaming, but there was also a Memorial Day weekend, which helps a lot. 33 games got added to the library. Some were overlooked because I just hadn't downloaded them, so there wasn't a point. One of the very fortunate gifts I received was a much larger memory card for the Vita. So I was finally able to download a lot of the PlayStation Plus games that... I just hadn't downloaded yet. One of the other items was Street Fighter 25th Anniversary Collector's Edition. Now, I had intended to do a opening for the podcast, but the lighting was all screwed up with it, so that got scrapped. But I did managed to, say, put in a little time with Street Fighter 4. It's the arcade edition, also the original. Raptor seems to want to track it only as the original. I logged the time as both, just so they'd both show up. I've had Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 4 arcade edition before from PlayStation Plus, but this freed up 40 gigs of space on the PS3 by deleting and using the disk. Those of you who say digital distribution is the future seem to forget that this late in the console cycle, your hard drives are going to be filling up unless you've been cleaning out the fridge regularly, which is not something I like doing unless I just am going to not be playing the game. And I know it. It's just It's like trading in games for me. I don't like doing it, not because of some high and mighty, oh, it hurts the publishers because we're uh, not doing, we're not buying new. No, that's, it's a collection. It's history. You don't know what's going to come back to either haunt you, Top Gun from NES, or help you celebrate your gaming history. Super Mario Brothers? Come on. Super Street Fighter 2. Turbo HD Edition. That's another one like that. Now, on Super Street Fighter 4 and the Arcade Edition, all I really did was set up my user. I got some special downloadable content icons and titles and things. So I set that up. I got a trophy for it, too. Woo! <laughs> Why in the world they offer a trophy for that? I don't know. But I guess they ran out of trophy ideas. Turbo Edition I actually played around with a little bit while I was waiting for some of the other stuff to download. It's just like it always was. And therefore I approve. Wipeout 2048. This was a Vita game that I finally got to download and play. And it's Wipeout. It's the PS3's Wipeout, but on the Vita. And for some reason, having it on the handheld makes it more compatible with me. I think it also has to do with the fact that the kids like to control the TV. Now, I know, I'm the dad. I could kick them off, but I feel bad about it. So, I don't. Wipeout's a decent racer. I would prefer a kart racer like Mario Kart. So I'm not going to play this one often, probably. And if I start running out of space on the Vita again, this is one of the first things to go. But it's still good. It's something to get the hang of, I'm pretty sure. Wii Sports shows up. It shows up. My arm 
was sore after using this for my morning exercise routine. I am skipping my morning exercise routine to bring you this podcast. Dedication. First time the internet has been wonky on me that I so I couldn't record on my usual time in the evening. Street Fighter Alpha 3. This is just like I remember it from the PlayStation 1. I love it. It's probably been my favorite Street Fighter. I have not had a chance to try Street Fighter Cross Tekken yet, but Street Fighter Alpha 3 is probably the top of my um, favorites at the moment, even beating out Super Street Fighter 4. I think it has to do with the animation style. 4 attempts to do all of the fancy stuff that the PlayStation 3 has to offer, while 3... Alpha 3 is still close enough to the Super Nintendo era that all it does is try to do what it does best, which is be a Street Fighter. This is actually the version available on the Vita, the PSP version, which doesn't lose any of the flavor of the original, in my mind. In fact, I think it gains because it's an improved menu system on the start. Plants vs. Zombies on the Vita. I know, I've played it before, I own it elsewhere, but... Again, taking some of these games into the handheld world makes it comfortable to play anywhere. Anywhere. BIO, for those of you who are MMO players, the facilities. Mega Man Mavic Country X. This is the PSP updated Mega Man X. I wish they had done this to the Mega Man X2 and X3, and perhaps even 4 and 5. But. I liked it. I was a little disappointed to see that they had moved some of the capsules. So you can't go into Chill Penguin stage and immediately get the sprint boots. Highly disappointed with that. It does mean that supposedly some of the other power-ups like the Zero Mega Buster are going to be elsewhere as well and perhaps easier to get. But it just seemed unfortunate that for whatever reason they decided to move these objects and when I play a classic even a remixed classic I want the feel of the original by that capsule not being there saying hello X I'm Dr. Light etc I felt robbed of that classic experience. It went away quickly, because you don't need the speed enhancement for Chill Penguin stage, but it would have been nice to have had. It's surprising how uh, dependent you get on a certain playstyle habit when you've played this classic multiple times. Treasures of Montezuma's Blitz. Hey look, another Vita game! Vita, 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 Vita. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, a memory card. People! There's a hidden cost to the Vita. Memory cards. Consider it before you buy a Vita. If you buy the 4 gig, thinking, oh, that'll be enough, it's not going to be. Especially if you have PlayStation Plus. Montezuma Blitz is basically a Bejeweled, a free-to-play Bejeweled, so every time you run out of hearts, or jewels, it'll ask you, hey, either come back later, or buy them now. I was able to get to level 8, which is two hours worth of play in one sitting. Sheesh! Didn't realize I sunk two hours into that game in the last week. Not too bad for a free-to-play game that uh, harasses you occasionally to by hearts and jewels. Metroid Other M. 
Don't you love birthdays and long weekends near each other? I heard a l Other M get a lot of flack when it first came out. I've always been curious to play it, and lo and behold, birthday gift! I'm really glad it was a birthday gift, because these days on Amazon, it's 10 bucks. Walmart, for some reason, is being stupid and still trying to sell it for 60 But go get it on Amazon. For $10, this feels great. Now, maybe everybody who spoke badly of it was bitter because they spent 60 on it. I don't know. But getting it as a gift and knowing it was $10, <laughs> it's a fantastic return of Metroid. You even get those frustrating moments of, there's an item! I see the item! How do I get to the item? Do I have to come back later? You get that. I'm only two hours in. I'm only into Sector 1. I'm past the intro stuff, and I'm into this first area. I like it. Oh no, Samus is being unauthorized to use missiles and bombs and super bombs, etc., etc., etc. She's got a little more story. They're nodding to her history a little bit. But... I don't really remember them nodding to her history much in the other games. So they're creating history, in my mind, for her. She's a bounty hunter. That hasn't changed. She formerly worked with the Galactic Alliance, or whatever their Galactic Federation, whatever they happen to be. And she suddenly runs into her commanding officer. And now they are her former commanding officer. Now, as a bounty hunter, she's working for them. Oh no! Complaints I heard ranged from that she was extra whiny. Have you guys that complain about that never been through a dramatic experience? A traumatic experience, I should say? Dramatic. <laughs> a traumatic experience, it changes you. This is coming off of Super Metroid. She's still reeling from the fact that something that she was hired to kill saved her. She grew attached to it. She showed mercy to this thing. It turns around and shows her loyalty. A human love and loyalty that she didn't think these creatures were capable of. And here she destroyed or attacked their home planet, their origination planet, in Metroid 2. She blew up the planet where her first mission, post-Bounty Hunter, was. Because this is, uh, I looked up the timeline as far as what Wikipedia believes. Metroid, Metroid 2, Super Metroid, Other M. The primes come later. If Other M is basically her fourth mission, she's still a quasi-fresh cadet. Because both Metroid and Metroid 2 are those get in, get out, snatch and grab. Same with this one. Other M. Get in, get out, blow stuff up, snatch and grab. In my mind, not a lot of time is passing between all of these different missions. So why would she be some hardened, tough bounty hunter? We just didn't have the technology to ever explore it before, so all they had to do was focus on gameplay. Now we're getting some story, too. Oh, no! Bunch of whiners. I like the game so far. I have not seen anything to it that would turn me off from the story. You're because of the story. We'll see if that continues. Only two hours in. StarCraft II. Had a nice little marathon of this. I received the uh, Heart of the Swarm expansion for my birthday as well. 
And I realized I hadn't played Wings of Liberty fully yet. Oops. I felt a little dirty about that, so I went back and played a little Wings of Liberty. This is such a good story game. I'm playing on casual, I'm playing through the campaign, I don't really care about all of these achievements for some reason. I think because Raptor doesn't track them, honestly. Same reason I don't care about Diablo 3 achievements, Raptor doesn't seem to want to track them. But StarCraft 2 is a fantastic experience. If you bought the game only for the multiplayer aspect and have been playing only multiplayer, you're doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong by ignoring the multiplayer. I will get to the multiplayer eventually. And I'll get my butt kicked. But right now I'm enjoying the campaign. And it is a satisfying campaign indeed. Lots of good story. I'm happy. There's no reason at the moment for me to move on to uh, other things. Magic the Gathering. So friend of mine, also a co-worker, hosted a little uh, grill out. I also had, on Tuesday, I also had a uh, game day for Dragon's Maze, and we also had Friday Night Magic. So, bam, 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 lots of magic this week. I was a sucker and picked up the uh, event deck for Dragon's Maze. I've never picked up an event deck before. I'm a little shocked and awed by the event deck. It's good. It feels good. I didn't have any cards with me when the, uh, the co-worker friend hosted, so I went and grabbed it. It's great. I also stood on my own pretty well with a intro pack that I'm going to use to meld with my Jund. But spending some birthday money on the intro pack felt good. I feel competitive. If I'm capable of it, we have to still rep gifts for the oldest, whose birthday is tomorrow, June 1st. So, not sure if I'll make it to Friday Night Magic tonight, but if I do, I'm doing it with the event deck. I approve of the event deck. I need a lot of tokens, though. World of Warcraft shows up. I got to play this quite a bit. Scored massive amount of achievements. I don't. Th I think Raptor even ran out of space on the report. Yep, eleven achievements, and it's only showing eight on the uh, weekly email. So. Got some good achievements. Got some good time with the game again. This game feels so fantastic when I have the time to play it. This last week, you know, the week after Memorial Day thus far, haven't been able to touch gaming much at all. Just what happens. I'd like to. Just don't have the time. Of course, did invest some time on... um. Tuesday to Magic the Gathering, Wednesday to grocery shopping, and then yesterday to, well, paperwork. But, say la vie. That's why I'm a gamer dad. Tanking is good, though. Tanking feels right. I like the 5.3 Battleground Barons. I think they should lower the amount you need and not be 150 just for us casuals. Oh no, the hardcore people might get it done in a day. Who cares? The casual people can't easily get it done in a day. I did it. But that's because I had plenty of time. I somehow managed to therefore get the um, pet that you can buy. Went straight for that first. And while I was doing it, going for it, I got three purple drops. The Crocon pieces that you then take the weekly reward 
shove it on to those pieces and they become a armor piece for your current spec or the spec you've picked in the upper left corner off your character profile awesome I am going to augment both sets as much as possible with these Crocron stuff things but I'm not going to gung-ho try to do it once I get enough to uh, use the two pieces that I currently have. I put one on the auction hall. There are three pieces. I put one on the auction hall so I could trade it basically for a different piece because I got two gloves. If I, that glove auction doesn't work out, well, then I'll have four items to augment instead of three. I'm not going to multi try multiple times with that. So, that was a nice, nice big chunky Raptor report. What about news? There's a World of Warcraft tidbit. Post 5.3 release, so it's not surprising that there's not a lot of news, but a hidden feature of 5.3? Multiple Death Knights! Have as many Death Knights as you want! Fill a server with Death Knights! Woo! That's right. That's it. But it's still neat. So, son, yesterday, after his last day of school, made a death knight on the home server. So, now he and his sister both have death knights on the home server, which is very cool. Last but not least, news tidbit. Twitter, I need, I desperately need a new Twitter client for my phone. The one I found that felt like a good replacement failed. It bombs. It blows up. I'm not spending money on this thing. The TweetDeck app, I am so far behind on Twitter that it keeps scrolling away the bottom stuff too much. I'm just probably going to choose a day like today and start from there and go fresh. So I don't have a lot of news, but I also did a lot of gaming, so I didn't monitor the news as much because of that. But a uh, student was suspended for a uh, for a hashtag comment on Twitter. So this particular school, they're having some um, financial difficulties. And this particular student says, hey, the principal should get fired. That's suspendable? Supposedly it's a harassment during school hours because he tweeted during school hours and therefore violated some other of the school rules regarding use of cell phones and whatnot. This is a high school senior. Um, if the school rules specifically state that students shouldn't be using their cell phones in school, they need to be enforcing it when it happens. If they don't, then it's not a legitimate rule. It's like when you drive past a police officer going way over the speed limit. You drive past that speed uh, that officer the next day, going the speed limit, and he pulls you over for yesterday. It's not going to happen in real life. So why is it happening in school? Oh, we have evidence that you used it during school time and we just um, had to catch up with you. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We had to catch up with you. No. No. Now, in the real world, in employment, they might do that to you. But when you're an at-will employee, they can do that to you. You're not an at-will employee at school. It's like kids getting nailed because they're holding red cups on Facebook and drinking. You don't know what's in those cups! So why in the world are you suspending them for alcohol use, quote-unquote? You don't know. You can't prove it. Unless the kids stupidly say, we were drinking Budweiser in the caption of the picture. 
But even then, they don't know the rest of the circumstances. It's outside of school, so the school needs to butt out. This is the same thing. Freedom of speech. The schools need to be teaching freedom of speech and the other tenets of our society. By punishing a child for freedom of speech, yes, he's still a child even though he's a senior in high school, then they're completely reneging on everything they were teaching those kids in social studies. It doesn't matter. They're violating the First Amendment. Handily. Should the student have been using his phone in class? No. None of them should. Because it's against the school rules. But, because it was being allowed, he shouldn't be being punished for it after the fact. Hey, so-and-so, put your phone away. Okay. Hey, so-and-so, put your phone away. Okay. Do it again, I take the phone. At least until the end of class. All right. See... That's what should have happened, and then the tweet wouldn't have happened. But since the teacher was complacent with it, the school gave permission to tweet during class. You can't nail him for it after the fact. Oh, but he said the principal should be fired. It's an opinion. It's a child of taxpayers. Probably... Over, po potentially over her their parents talking about it. or because they're almost an adult had an opinion of his own heaven forbid school politics garbage well I'm Flame Flash and this has been a Wrapped Report Heavy, FlameFlash.net podcast. E3 is just around the corner next month. Gaming news is probably going to be pretty dry until then, but hopefully this weekend, son's birthday, he and I will get some gaming in, and it'll show up on the next Raptor Report. FlameFlash on Twitter. FlameFlash on Raptor. R-A-P-T-R dot com. Come check me out. You can find all sorts of links to my other uh, profiles from there podcast at flameflash.net email in we'll see you next week hopefully with a working internet connection until then